Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Today we are taking a look back at the entire year and sharing with you the best of. The best of 2011. Do you have a favorite from the year? You know, it's always hard to choose for a whole year because we've done so many projects. But I chose, I uh, guess, water bottle bracelets. And the reason I chose, chose them is not only because I really love them for eco uh, friendly, but everybody else loved them. That simple water bottle bracelet where you just cut the, the water bottle and then you covered it with fabric, everybody's favorite. Everywhere I went and I taught it, everyone loved it. So it's kind of like my favorite and everybody's favorite. Can you tell it's her favorite? She's <laughs> talking and talking and talking. <laughs> Candace Jedrowitz is joining us today, of course, and her favorite project was one of yours. Well, one of mine, of hers. Yeah. <laughs> I loved her kitschy, her kitschy clock because I loved all the little things that she glued onto it. That was just totally me. So what she's creating today is a kitschy pedestal. She's going to add this to her mantle. Super cool. And what did you, what's your favorite? <laughs> it's really hard for me to pick. I had so many favorites, but the wax resist on Cool to Cast was my favorite project this year. So what I've done is I have taken this to make a little art canvas. I love it. Don't go away, we'll be right back. I can't believe a whole year has gone by and it's time to think about the best of and what we love the best because there's so many things to choose from. I mean, you think about all the different things that we, we make during the year and it's like, how can you even choose? But we were all able to do that today. You know, you just kind of keep narrowing it down and yeah. go, yeah, that's really the one. Yeah. So what is your project today? Well, obviously, like I said, it's, it's the water bottle bracelet that was so popular with all the, you know, a lot of times I go out and do um, talks at different groups and organizations, and I go to the kids' schools and things like that and teach my eco-crafting. And this particular one where you just cut out the bracelet and wrap it was everybody's favorite and, and I love to see the enthusiasm of people where they um, it's like oh that's eco-friendly oh I can do that so this is my favorite and um, I put a little bit a few little felt flowers on it to make it a little different take a look To make these fun bracelets, I'm using the Aline's Original Tacky Glue. It's an all-purpose glue, but I love it because of the flexibility, and the uh, plastic water bottles definitely are flexible. Now, choose your water bottle by the size of your wrist. So the smaller ones are going to be for a smaller wrist. So you, if you wanted to use these you and you wanted for a bigger one, you'd have to add to it. So you're going to cut your pieces, and then you'd have to add to make it bigger. These that are a little bit bigger to begin with, work really, really well for most, uh, most wrists. So I've taped off with uh, just masking tape, and this will determine the size of the, the width of the bracelet. So if you want it a little bit smaller, then pick a smaller width of the masking tape. Or on this one, I can't find masking tape that's a half inch, so I just cut it in half. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a craft knife, and you're going to cut just put your knife in there and just cut it apart. Then you just trim with your scissors right up to the masking tape. Now if the blue masking tape is not going to affect the color of the uh, fabric that I put on, then I just leave it on 
on this particular one I'm going to be using white fabric so I would take it off. Super simple. And there's my bracelet ready to be covered. So I've removed the um, masking tape and you can see there's a couple different sizes here. We'll just check, we're going to take this smaller one and again make sure it's going to go over your wrist. Another tip when you're using any of the Aline's glues that are in the squeeze bottles, if you leave them on their side, the glue is closer to the, to the nozzle so it will come out quicker. Put a little glue on the inside. And I've already ripped my fabric to be oh, about three, oh, maybe three quarters to an inch wide. And then I've ironed it. I'm going to put it into my glue. And then you just start to wrap it. And hold on to the glued part first. And then pull it tight. And then every so often on the inside there, add a little bit more glue. Again, pulling snug. And a little more of the Aline's Tacky Glue. Remember that this is a great one because it's flexible. And you can see with all this flexing, when it dries, you want to make sure that this is going to stay in place. We've got a thread there. Take that thread off. Now this one ended up pretty perfect where I just have a little piece left. If you ran out of uh, fabric, you can always piece it together by just gluing with the Aline's Tacky Glue um, a little bit more. So on the inside of this tab, we're going to put a little bit of glue and then just fold it under. Now you can use the bracelet just like this. This is where it's been my favorite because you can stack a whole bunch of them or we can cover them with the um, felt die cut pieces. Now I found with my felt that the die cutting machines don't always cut all the way through the felt. So I found if you go through and use the Aline Tacky Glue, again the original Aline Tacky Glue um, in the gold bottle, Put it on the back, squeeze it on the back, let it dry completely. It gives it a lot more stability. So when you put it in the machine, it works really well. But you need to let it dry really good. So I have my little pieces here. And I've even um, punched out some, just some uh, quarter inch paper punch from the felt. And then you just start to glue them on. And I liked it where they were kind of bunched up and close together. A little, and remember again that the glue dries clear. You just add them all the way on, like this one, until you just have a bunch of little flowers and it makes the perfect bracelet. How fun is that? So now everyone can see why these are your favorite, my favorite, their favorite. And just think about this, the new year of 
teaching this to all the people that you know. I mean, when you have little parties and gatherings or you, you need something for a school group or a church group or anything, so easy. And it's just pennies. And when we're always on a budget, this is just a perfect. And look at how cool it looks. I know. I love it. I love this. Let's see. Would they fit me? And oh, gosh, oops. I think they match. <laughs> yeah. They're lightweight. You mm -hmm. can create them in any colors, mm -hmm. designs that you want. And I just have two new bracelets And now. it's, it's kind of like use what you have around the house. I mean, when I put out a call to someone that I need, I need something, you know, like t-shirts or, or fabric or whatever. It's amazing what I get in my little, the little baskets that or boxes that people bring. There's a lot of bartering that goes yeah. on in the craft studio. <laughs> I'll give you one t-shirt for three water bottles. Yeah. Or teach me how and, and what can I bring. And um, it's amazing how many people will bring like shirts and things like that and just rip them up the same way that I rip my fabric up. Use what you have. You don't have to go out and buy. Um, and then it makes it a great eco project because you're, you're upcycling things that you have. So there you have it. Heidi's best of for the year. Eco water bottle well, bracelets. Not only best of, but favorite of. <laughs> <laughs> best of, favorite of. <laughs> Candace Jedrowitz picked her favorite project from this year. And as we mentioned earlier, when I was chatting with Heidi, you guessed it. You I did. It. I did because it was, it just was it was totally me, and I was just like I really love that one. Remember when we were doing that project too? We were talking about the, the mirror that I'm working on that's got all the little things, and I haven't got much further than when we were talking about it. But um, I just I just love it when things are glued. All those little gathering things. Well, today Candace is sharing her kitschy pedestal. Hi, Candace. Hi, Candace. Hi ladies! Hey everybody! You're back in my studio of Perpetual Mojo again and you are always welcome. Today I am going to talk about my most favorite project all year long, my kitschy clock. I just loved putting every little knick-knack and doodad and hoochie bob on it and I love the way it looks on my mantle. And I know I need at least one other kitschy piece up there. So sit back and relax, get comfy, because here we go. I brought my kitschy clock down for inspiration and to make sure that I would have enough similar elements for these to look really wonderful together on my mantle. This is a wooden box and it's about five inches across. And I've already done some shoring up of this piece because it's going to be a pedestal and may hold one of my heavier ceramics. So I used lots of feet and I screwed them in. And then I have another piece inside of here that's just as tall as the box so that if the weight is on the center, it will absolutely support it. This also means that I won't be putting anything on the top. I'll just be working on the sides. I've started by using a pencil to draw a wavy line because that's where I want to put my saying everyone needs a little kitsch. So it's going to wind around and I'll put that on first and then I've laid out lots of fun cool elements to add to it. So let's get started. I'm using a hot glue gun and tweezers to place my small items. And I do have some much smaller items. But I have some lovely big accents as well. I'm going to wait till the end to clean off all of my little hot glue gun strings. This is a polymer clay donut bead and of course we're going to have to have a cup of coffee with it. There we go, donut and coffee, yay! Ooh, I think that's going to fit nice there. This is a piece of dichroic glass and I've glued some wire onto it wrapped and glued. So I'm going to go around 
placing all of the larger pieces and then I'll go back and do some of the smaller ones. I've added all of the big ones that I think I want to use and now I'm adding smaller ones filling in with oh, a bunch of different things and then the last step will be to add the top rim. I have all my large pieces now and most of my small pieces in and you can see over here I've started to layer on top of things and that's how that goes. You just find things that fit in and fill in without covering your most favorite parts and just keep on gluing. Oh my goodness, I just love this. I'm all finished. I've added all kinds of layers and you can't see some of my original pieces underneath except for just a little bit of a glimmer, but that's okay with me. I think that the layering really makes it interesting. And anywhere you find little leftover pieces of hot glue, just do a soft toothbrush in a circular motion and it will clean them up. Hello, Kitchyliciousness! I just love this stuff. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do my whole house. Oh, I'm gonna do the outside of my house with this. <gasps> that would be so awesome, wouldn't it? I guess I better get to work. I'm gonna hand it back to you guys. Stay crafty, my friends. I'm gonna go make some more kitsch. So there you have it. It's a kitschy pedestal. What this project brings to mind for me is, do you remember we did the life tree? Oh yeah, I still have one. Do you have it? Mm -hmm. Because you can be kitschy with your collectibles. You can take it in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of our life tree where you take, maybe there's a lot of things that you gather throughout the year and you just glue them on to a pedestal or a life tree. Right. And, and actually great. our sister Candace back from in Maryland she took a, a box and she made it like a life box. It was she, a hat box. Yes, yeah, she glued all of her things onto a hat box and it was really cool. If I have a photo of that, I will share that in this week's Almost Dailies, but I know I have a picture of the tree. Okay. So we'll share the life tree in this week's Almost Dailies. Yeah, it's really cool. I need to call, call those Almost Weeklies because I've been behind. <laughs> I haven't done any lately. So. I'm wondering because she wasn't even asking me for anything. No, no I've been so busy with everything else. It's like I haven't had time for that. It's that time that. of the year. It is. So your favorite, <laughs> uh, it really doesn't surprise me either because when Tiffany loves something, she just doesn't stop. So when we first found this out, we were just kind of playing. And we first found it out and we were working on one of our work tables. By the time we were done, she had the whole work table covered with projects of it and she just couldn't stop. So I never I do <laughs> just one. I never do just one. And when I was actually preparing for today's segment. Yeah. Heidi walked in the studio. There's not just one. It's the whole <laughs> tabletop is covered with pieces of cool to cast. Yeah. And of course, I'm so excited because cool to cast is finally making it out to the mass market yes. and um, it, in, in the new year. And so it's, um, it's pretty fun for me to try all of these different techniques. Yeah. Well, this one totally, trust me, this was her favorite techniques. Here you go. For this technique, I am using Cool to Cast. These are pieces that I have poured in the mold. You let it sit for about an hour until it's completely solid. You pop them out of the mold and then you let them dry completely. I am using crayons and a heat gun. We'll also be using some acrylic paint and a marking pen. So the first thing that you want to do is to heat up your Cool to Cast piece with the heat gun. You can heat up the piece and then put your crayon onto it, but what I found is I like to actually speed up the process, so you're going to see me actually coloring while the heat gun is on, 
be very, very, very careful if you do it this way because this heat gun is very, very hot. So if you direct it anywhere close to your hands, it could burn you. So you don't want to do that. So be careful and develop the technique that works best for you. So as you can see, it goes very, very quickly. That heat gun heats up those crayons very quickly. You're going to let this cool down a little bit. It's, it's warm to the touch. It's not burning hot, but it is warm. So you're going to let that set for just a few minutes. The next step is to apply some of your acrylic paint colors to the back. So that wax is going to act as a resist. And I just use a wet wipe. You want a wet, wet wipe to pick up your color and just rub it right onto the cool to cast. What I like about the wet wipe is that you can get a variation to your color. It's not like using a brush where you get a solid amount of paint. But with the wet wipe, you can come back to a clean spot, pull some of that color off, and it just adds to the in interest in the coloring. So pick whatever colors of crayons that you want for this technique, whatever color of acrylic paint that you want, and you can see that I'm trying to just very gently pull some of that color back off the heart area. If you pull too hard or push too hard, you'll end up pulling some more of that crayon off, which is a very interesting effect, but on this particular piece, that's not what I want to do. So you're going to let this dry completely, and again, this just takes a few minutes. Now that my acrylic paint is dry in the background, I just use a Micron pen and I have a 0.5 or 0.5 and an 0.1 and I do want this to be a little bit wider, bolder drawing around the outside of my heart. So I'm using the larger of the two. The reason I pick a design like this is that I do not have to be really neat with my drawing skills. Sometimes your pen will pick up some of that wax, so use a light touch, be careful. And I do find if that happens, it stops working, but if I let it just set for a little while, it will work again. So once again, I just do lots of different stripes around the outside edge, and you don't have to be perfect about this. And I'm using a heart design today, but you can do any sort of design that you can draw. I could draw a flower and a heart, so that's probably the range of my drawing skills on this. I'm going to let that set aside and work on the canvas for the background. This is a, looks like it's about a two by two or maybe two and a half by two and a half canvas. And um, actually, you know what, it's three by three. So this is a little mini canvas that I found at my local art store. And I used the same wet wipe that I was using to color the back of my, my piece. And I'm going to use that same one to color the canvas. And again, rather than using a brush, I am reusing the paint <laughs> that is still on the wet wipe. And you can get an intriguing design. And I think I want to bring in a little bit more of my aqua.
and then you're going to let the canvas dry completely. While your canvas is drying, you can put a coat of your 3D crystal lacquer onto the top of your cool to cast piece. And to do that, you simply draw around the outside edge. And if you notice, I'm keeping the tip up from the surface. You don't need to run that tip along the surface. Just hold it up just a fraction above the surface. big bubble. It's easy, we can get that out of there. So this is going to dry undisturbed overnight and this is what's going to give you a, that beautiful glossy finish to your cool to cast piece. Once this is all dry, then you can glue it onto your canvas and you have a quick and easy project that you can display. You can give this as a gift. This is one of my favorite techniques that I have shared this year. So this is the Wax Resist with Cool to Cast. So with my favorite technique, as you can see, I tried it on an art canvas today because I have all of the rings and pendants that I could possibly wear <laughs> for five years. So I thought, how else can I use these same little inchy pieces? And I love that. I think mm -hmm. that's so sweet. This would be perfect to be on someone's desk. You know, you don't want to have a lot of room, um, but it's, it's perfect as a gift. And these little canvases that we found. I know. I was fun. shopping with Heidi for our Christmas shopping, and I think you spotted them first. Mm -hmm. You Did you buy some? I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Because no. I... <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, look at the... And I do this, this to my sisters yes. all the time. Yes. I'm like, look at how cool this is. It's like, I give oh, it to them. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> and then so. I don't end up buying. They buy it. And so then if I if I need it, it's like, oh, did you have any of those canvases left? Did you see how many packages that I bought? You did. I, I know. just, it's like, oh my gosh. They were the cutest little canvases. They're perfect for the little pieces of the cool to cast. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love to do canvas artwork anyway. And like you said, as a little gift, of course, this will make a lovely gift. And you can paint the easel. Mm -hmm. The to, easel came from the same place. Right. right. It wasn't in the same package. You've got a, mm -hmm. a package of what? Six? It looks like there's six canvases in the package. Five, five. in that one. Yeah. Five. And uh, this was actually a different size, than different shape. There's the size. Right. And so That's these cool. were also available. They were just a couple of dollars, I think, for yeah. the easels. And so uh, what I want to do is actually paint this little easel black. Oh, cool. Yeah, because I think that'll pick up that design well, let's see. nicely. Is that going to be my New Year's present? Or? I don't know. Because <laughs> my birthday is a long time away. I know, I know, and it won't, it won't last that long. So, what a fun show today with Best Of, because it, it's intriguing to me to find out what was mm -hmm. the, the best of for you and also for Candace. But like I said, it was hard to choose. It was really, you know, she said, well, just go through your studio and, and find something. Because at, at first when she said it, I'm like, things that I really, really love. I love everything. I'm like going through and going through, and I'm like, oh, that's it, mm -hmm. that's it. So let's let everyone know what you created on today's show. Well, what I created was what she took away and she has on her arm. It is a water bottle bracelet. That means it's made out of a water bottle. You just slice the water bottle into like half inch pieces. And I covered it with uh, fabric. And then I cut out little felt flowers from a die cutting machine and glued them on. Super simple and so easy and inexpensive to make. And Candice Jadrowitz recreated her kitschy look. Earlier in the year, she did a kitschy clock. So now she told me that she was adding this to her her mantle so that, you Maybe know, she went from really drab to, to really bright. So the clock might go on top of the, I don't know, the pedestal. I don't, I don't know. Ask her. We'll have to see. <laughs> so this is uh, Candace's kitschy pedestal that she created. And your project was really cool too. My project is Cool to Cast. Yay for Cool to Cast, which is a fiber plaster. You will see this in your local stores in the new year. And what I did today is I created wax resist technique. What is my favorite design? Hearts. Yes. Hearts. 
So hearts, I, hearts, <laughs> hearts. <laughs> I did wax resist on a cold to cast piece. This is just like a one inch by one inch inchy. But and not only that, it's, it's crayon mm -hmm. wax resist. Right. Crayon, not right. you don't have to go and get any expensive tools mm -hmm. for this. It's just crayon. And I glued my cool to cast piece onto just a little mini canvas that Heidi and I found at our local art store. And I think this makes a really cool gift. You know, Valentine's is not that far off. No, and it's so not. think about you it. You asked me when I was gonna give this to you. Maybe it's Valentine's. <laughs> So, but you know, think about it, and, and you could do it larger too with that same technique. Oh, of course, you could yeah. put a whole bunch mm -hmm. of them. I actually have some drawing, and they were a collection of four, oh, which cool. would be really cool on yeah. a little bit larger canvas. We would like to invite all of you, if you have not already done so, to join us at Facebook. Go to facebookcom cool to craft and like us. Then you can keep up to date with all of the projects that we're sharing. We remind you to watch the show with us live on Mondays. We also remind you to catch the reruns or to watch the individual archive segments. And you can also then click through to the step-by-step -step tutorials. Mm -hmm. Don't forget too that on our cooltocraft.com page is a um, newsletter. You can click on signing up for the newsletter. That's the Cool to Craft uh, face, uh, Fave Crafts newsletter. So it has all of the projects also on the um, with Favecrafts, and don't forget the almost dailies that are almost weeklies that are that are almost monthlies <laughs> that you sign up right here if you're on cooltocraft.com. We do a lot. We you know we're not always like like everything flows like this. It's like sometimes we get like bloopers or, or there's extra projects that we we can't quite fit into the show that get into the almost dailies, and um, so be sure you sign up for the almost dailies. So it's the newsletter, the almost dailies, because they're not the same. The newsletter comes out twice a week where almost dailies are not almost daily. Whenever I have time, <laughs> whenever I have this, everything else gets done first and yeah. then it's the almost dailies. But we'd and love to keep in touch with everyone with all of the extra information. And don't forget too that we do have um, shopcooltocraft.com. There is a little marketplace um, on that site that you can uh, purchase a lot of the things that we have on here. And um, even some of the designs get on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the new year, if you're looking for some gifts for some special friends, mm -hmm. we do donate 100% of the net proceeds to DonorsChoose.org. Mm -hmm. Well, another great show, <laughs> another great year. I can't believe it. I can't either. Well, we've got lots of good stuff uh, on the coming year, too. And it's always oh. wonderful to share it with my sister. This oh. has been so great to move from the East Coast to the West Coast this year so I can be here in the Eco Heidi studio and yeah. take it over. <laughs> <laughs> no, she isn't taking that over there. This area, yeah, a little bit. But I help her take over too. Am I really good about uh, putting things on all the tables? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. She, um, yes. <laughs> Don't even go into that. That's an almost daily. Get creative. Get inspired. Be, be cool. cool. Bye.